We've started our journey a couple weeks now on a new year. And usually we look forward to a new year, look forward to new things. And this year is no different, even though maybe the main thing we're looking forward to is maybe getting a handle on this virus so that we can get things back to normal we together again. However, we do have other challenges that we face each and every day in our life. And your thoughts and concerns this year are still going to be on those things, whether it be family, friends, your job, employment, uh, going to have enough funds to get by for a certain time period, various things in your life you're going to have and you're going to be concerned about. Now, in spite of all that's going on in our worldly life, we have challenges in our spiritual life as well. And as we think about that, to handle our spiritual challenges, we need to make sure that we turn to the Word of God and not our own means of problem solving like so many try to do in this world today. We just had a Christmas holiday and we changed gifts and so forth, but we need to remember that as Christians, we already have the most precious gift of all, and that's God's love and that he gave his son to die a cruel death on the cross for our sins. Keeping this in mind helps us keep everything in perspective. Even when we have that most important gift, other things in this world sort of shrink in significance. An anonymous author, and you probably have heard this before, uh, wrote these words on an insane asylum wall. And it was his desire or her desire to seek to describe God's love. Could we with ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made, were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. Indeed, it's impossible to describe God's love with our, our human words and our human thoughts. Before we broke again for the virus and broke from gathering together with each other, uh, we had a few lessons on God's love, and while we're not going to forget that all-encompassing significance of his love tonight, I'd like to look tonight at some ways that God's love can help us with the uncertainties we may encounter in this coming year. So as we look forward to these this year and what uncertainties we have, let's look at some things that may give us concern and see what God's answer is. One, a lot of times, even though people look forward to the new year, they get concerned about the future. And one of the big question marks this year is, you know, what's going to happen with a virus? Are we really going to get rid of it? Is the vaccine really going to help us? Also, you have other things in your life that probably are concerning you at this time, or at least you think about. We shouldn't be worried all the time, but we do in spite of ourselves. But what does God say? In Isaiah 41.10, we read, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will hold you with my righteousness, right, righteous right hand. So when we're afraid of the future, remember, God is in control. What about when the storms of life pour down upon us? You ever have one of those days when you get up and you've got everything planned out and nothing goes the way you had it planned. You have all kinds of emergencies and things that happen. Uh, storms uh, uh, beseech us on every side. There's a uh, comic book or a comic strip called The Born Loser. I don't know if you've ever read it or not, but everything goes wrong. He never has a good day. Well, most of us do better than that, but we do have things and difficulties in life. Going to James chapter one and verse two, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have it perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. Remember, God is in control. What about when Satan prowls? Satan likes to find us at our weak moments, maybe on those times when we're having a lot of troubles. What does the Bible tell us there? going to 1 Peter 5, and verse 8, and, be, and after. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. 
Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Yes, when Satan prowls and when we have trouble with Satan, remember, God is in control. Sort of related to that, what about when temptations just seem too much to bear? Seems like Satan knows where our weak points are at, and when we get to one of those weak points, Satan reminds us and prods us a little bit. And sometimes we get to the point maybe that we think, you know, we just can't resist. But what does God tell us? 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. But God is faithful, and who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. We must look for the way of escape. So when temptations seem too much to bear, remember God is in control. What about when culture loves darkness rather than light? Look around the world in you today and you see a lot of darkness in people's lives. And a lot that love that darkness rather than the light. So when we see that, it's sometimes tempting to get discouraged maybe. You know, like the, there's so much darkness around us, it seems like they outnumber us and that we're alone. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 5. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsel of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. Indeed, as Christians, we have to kind of look at the big picture. Those in darkness sometimes seem to do better than us. But in the end, there will be a judgment. And at that time, the darkness will be revealed. And we will have our praise from God for standing in the light and walking in the light. Remember, God's in control. You know, we've recently gone through an election. What about when our nation elects leaders? Sometimes they don't go exactly the way we want them to. Sometimes we think things went wrong. However, if we look at what God says in Romans chapter 13, verse 1 and following, Let ever so be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be afraid of the author unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject not only because of wrath, but for conscience' sake. The only exception to that is the fact that if we're uh, directed by our government to do something that's contrary to God's law, for instance, if we were told we could no longer meet and worship God, we would still be obligated as Christians to find a way to meet and worship. Remember, God is in control. That's pause and continue our song service. We'll come back for part two. In continuing and looking at things that may be uncertainties or may be things that we face this next year, you know, sometimes we may kind of feel like we're not doing any good. Uh, we may feel like well, people just really don't listen to sound doctrine. We teach and we preach and we don't seem sometimes that people don't listen to us. They reject us. But that shouldn't really be surprising to us that people don't listen to sound doctrine at all the time. We find from first, Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. 
but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And we see that all around us. That's why we have so many denominations around us. People decide that they don't like this part, so they just change it to suit themselves. Or they get somebody to come in and teach them that will teach them what they want to hear and nothing else. But as Christians, we're still admonished to continue teaching and preaching and spreading the word regardless. So when people don't listen to sound doctrine or it seems to us nobody's listening, remember God is in control. And we will leave that to him as long as we do our part. What about when people persecute us? Uh, you know, back when I was younger, I didn't really think too much about persecution, even though some of it went on, somebody might laugh at you or something. But, you know, as we get on in this world today and in our nation today, I think persecution is, is getting more real for Christians. Uh, you see things being done that try to dissuade us from doing uh, what God wants us to do. 2 Timothy 3 in chapter 12. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly furnished for every good work. Indeed, these scriptures tell us you can expect persecution from time to time. However, we need to continue in the things we've been taught from the Holy Word, that God's Word is sound for us to use for instruction and for all righteousness. So when people persecute us, remember God is in control. Sort of along with that, what about when people speak evil against us or insult us, sort of along the same line of persecution? In Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 11, it says, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. You know, sometimes we don't think of being blessed when people are reviling us and, and saying bad things about us because we're Christians. But one thing that tells you is you're probably doing the word of the, you're doing God's will. And that's the reason they're upset. And that's the reason they say things. So we will have times like that, but we are to continue and continue in the faith. So when we get things and people that speak evil against us, remember, God is in control. This other one, the next one, may sound a little strange to you. Uh, what about when we cannot save ourselves from our sins? And you say, well, as Christians, we know we don't save ourselves from sin. But sometimes you see even Christians getting to the point that they start thinking about, you know, I'm pretty good. Uh, I do this and I do that. And, and, you know, I read my Bible every day. And if you're not careful, you can get to the point to where you're sort of heaping up and thinking to yourself, you know, I'm, I'm good enough for salvation just by myself for all the things I'm doing. But we need to sometimes, even as Christians, go back to the basis and remember why we have salvation. I want to read a few scriptures, and if you'll bear with me for just a minute. Uh, Acts 2.38, Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then going to Romans chapter 6, starting with verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. 
knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. And then moving on down to verse 20 of chapter 6 of Romans. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then of the things which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So as we go through our Christian life, continually remind ourselves where our salvation is. Our gift of eternal life is in Christ Jesus and none other. And we ourselves, while we need to do the will of God and continue to work hard for him and to do his will and all of his commandments, we need to be sure that we don't get puffed up and thinking we're doing something that, that's going to grant us salvation. Again, remember God is in control. You know, death is something we all face. We don't have any option in that regard unless we're alive when Christ comes again. But sometimes we know that death is near and, and other times we just don't know it's uncertain. It could be the next minute, it could be f five years from now or sometime we don't know what time we will die. But sometimes we pretty much know that things are getting close. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and beginning in verse 54. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immor immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Indeed, to the Christian, death is something that while we like being here on earth with our family and friends, death shouldn't be something that we're afraid of because we know the life that we have beyond. Indeed, we know that that. Uh, our victory is through Christ and that death is conquered through that. So as we get on up in years like me, and we know that death is probably sooner rather than later compared to the rest of our life. Uh, remember, God's in control. And as Christians, we can expect that victory. And finally, in my list of things tonight is when Jesus returns. You know, we as Christians believe that, and this is one of those uncertainties, uncertain is the time, it's certain that Jesus will return, even though many in the world reject that. So even though we don't know the time, we look forward to that. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with verse 16, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. We ought to look at those words every now and then and be comforted by that, that even if all things go on, we have to look forward to uh, a life in heaven with our Lord. And maybe within our lifetime, no one knows. Uh, Christ will return one day. Maybe it will be in our lifetime. Maybe in several lifetimes in the future. But the scriptures tell us to comfort one another with these words of what will happen in the end. In all cases, remember, God is in control. Now, I hope this evening you picked up on the lesson, the theme of the lesson tonight. Remember, God is in control. And regardless of what happens this new year, Keep reminding yourself of that. When things go bad, instead of doubting and so forth, remember God's in control and he will be there and he has things in his control at all times. This anonymous uh, little poem uh, might help to kind of keep things in, in perspective, particularly catch the last line. 
Count your blessings instead of your crosses. Count your gains instead of your losses. Count your joys instead of your woes. Count your friends instead of your foes. Count your smiles instead of your tears. Count your courage instead of your fears. Count your full years instead of your lean. Count your kind deeds instead of your mean. Count your health instead of your wealth. And yes, above all, count on God instead of yourself. If there are those here tonight that do not know God's love and have not obeyed the gospel, now is the time to come to know God's love and to embrace that he is in control. If you're not sure you fully understand what's required, we have those who would be glad to study with you. Or if you're a Christian and in need of the prayers of the church, now is the time to come. Do not be one of those who is almost persuaded but ends up lost on the day of judgment. 